As a content creator and freelancer over the years, I've had many questions about how I got to the point that I'm at now in terms of full-time freelancing and full-time content creation. And one of those main questions has always been, how did you manage a full-time job whilst doing content creation on the side initially? And to be honest, it's a really tricky one to answer because I actually struggled a lot as well, especially in those beginning stages of me doing content creation and realizing that that's what I wanted to do. I always knew that I wanted to do freelancing, but it was a really rough road for me to get there in the end. And I did kind of have a lot of things that I stumbled over in the process to get there. Having said that though, I've learned a lot along the way and I definitely have some points for any of you out there who are looking at getting into full-time freelancing or full-time content content creation. And if you have a full-time job already, I know that this can be a really difficult process at times to get started. So for those of you who are new here, which there may be quite a few of you, and thank you so much for subscribing to this channel if you have already. My name is Kaylee June and I'm a content creator and beauty photographer based near Sydney, Australia. And I have been doing content creation and freelancing for well over 10 years now. So I've been doing it mainly for about five or six years now full-time. So I really want to talk a bit about today what has helped me get to this point point in the end and what you can do if you really want to become a full-time content creator eventually alongside having to have a full-time job in the process. I hope that these pointers today in this video are really going to help you out. So you may notice I've got a different backdrop today. I am sitting in front of my Christmas tree and yes, it's very beige. So don't make fun of me for my beige Christmas tree. All I've been seeing on TikTok lately is the beige Christmas tree trend and the fact that everyone hates it. So unfortunately I have a beige Christmas tree and I'm just a very vanilla girl. Okay. But the the reason I'm actually down here today is because it is so hot in my office upstairs and I do not have aircon up there. So in Australia currently, it's really hot being summer. So we are going to just chill down here today and I'm going to film this video and talk about some of the things that have really helped me become a content creator and especially those things that really helped me whilst I was having a full-time job and doing it on the side. So the first tip we're going to talk about today, and I feel like it is the most important tip because as someone who had a full-time job, one thing that I found when I was trying to do content creation on the side was that I would really easily get burnt out and I would often feel uninspired or unmotivated to kind of try new things with content creation because I was just so tired and burnt out from my other job. And for those of you out there who have a full-time job and you're just looking at doing content creation for fun, that is so awesome. And you can probably still take some points from this video, but I think overall this video is probably going to be more so aimed at people who want to eventually transition from a full-time job into full-time content creation and kind of how you can make that happen on the side initially. The first point that I want to go into, I feel is really the most important one, and it is to make space and time for your creativity. Now with the nine to five daily grind, you can feel very, very burnt out easily when you're doing both a nine to five job and content creation. And it's, if it's something that you're working really hard towards and you're really wanting to make it happen as soon as possible, it can feel like so much of your time is spent up with just work. And that's how it eventually feels as well. It feels like work, this content creation that you're having to do on the side, as well as maintaining your full-time job. It can be really difficult to get into that creative headspace. So I would always say to people who are looking at doing this as a side hustle or something just on the side initially uh, alongside a full-time job, make sure that you have that space and that time for your creativity. And when I say that, I feel like I mean really taking time off and letting yourself experiment creatively, letting yourself not always be in the headspace of work and making money. And I know it's hard to get out of that headspace at times. And obviously that's one of the main things that you need to think about if you're starting a side hustle. But I do really feel that with content creation, so much of it is creativity and you really need to have those creative juices flowing. So make sure you're doing things and incorporating things alongside of this on a daily basis that really helps those creative juices flow. And whether that is going for exercise, or going for a walk, or maybe you like to hike outside in nature, or maybe you just like to do illustrations or do a little bit of art on the side, different types of art. Definitely make time for those things and those hobbies that really will fulfill you creatively as well, because that is really important to maintain that creativity as well as the discipline needed to consistently post and to consistently keep your content creation intact as you go along. So out of everything, please make sure that creativity is always number one and 
really helping yourself to get back in that space when you need to. The second point we're going to go through today is to really find a schedule that works for you. Now, too often I find that I see videos about how to have the perfect schedule on YouTube and obviously consistency when it comes to posting, whether that is for YouTube or Instagram, TikTok, whatever platform you're using. But I do feel like there's a really fine line between burning yourself out and then having a good disciplined schedule as well that you can stick to. Find a schedule that works really well for you. And if that means posting just once a week, then just post once a week. Anything that's going to avoid you feeling burnt out or tired or uninspired with what you're doing, make sure you avoid doing a schedule like that. Because I can tell you from personal experience, I have listened to those videos that told me to post three times a week to YouTube. I have listened to those videos that have told me to do daily Instagram posting as well as when I've been stuck in a full-time job. And let me tell you, those schedules might be okay for some people. Some people have the ability to really push through with that kind of thing. But for me, it drained me. It often made me anxious because I felt like the days that I did miss or if I, I did accidentally miss one week of posting, I felt really anxious and I felt like I wasn't on top of things. I felt like I was falling behind and I wasn't working towards what I wanted to work towards. You absolutely need to make sure that your schedule is sustainable for what you're doing. For example, I do quite a lot of things in my business overall and with my main business being my photography and really keeping that running and maintaining that business, I am not able to do three videos a week for this channel, unfortunately. So what I've been doing this year has been sticking to just one video per week if I can and I felt like that was a schedule that really worked for me. I also had a daily posting routine which I've talked about in some other videos where I was posting to Instagram every day for six months. Now that was a challenge that I set myself and that did have a finite um, end time, I guess you would call it, but I felt like that still worked for me. It was still achievable for me in the end and I didn't want to push myself too far with either of those things that I had going on. I definitely know my limits now as someone who's been doing this for a really long time. So I think it's just all about finding yours and really what is realistically going to work for you. And that actually brings me along to my next point. And the next point is that whatever you do, just make sure that the schedules and the goals that you're setting for yourself are easy to achieve. Because the second that they're not easy to achieve, that's when it's gonna be really difficult to stick to either of those things. And you really want to make this as simple and easy as possible as long as you've got a full-time job that you're having to go to. There is nothing worse than trying to work all weekend on five different posts for the week, for example, because you may have bitten off more that you could chew with a schedule or something else. So it's really important to make sure that whatever you're setting yourself for the week, it really has to be easy and as simplified as possible. Along with that, make sure to plan ahead and really utilize platforms out there to help you plan your content. I really do feel like that'll take the stress off of you if you are maintaining a full-time job, but you're also wanting to post very consistently with your content. So Planoly is a platform that I've often talked about on my channel before, and Planoly is something that I use for quite a few of my social media accounts, particularly Instagram, to help myself plan ahead. Now, in terms of talking about planning and setting goals, I don't think you need to have a set plan at the beginning. A lot of people will tell you on YouTube and a lot of the productivity gurus and that will tell you if you want to quit your full-time job, you've got to have a plan of what you want to do with content creation and with freelancing and all the rest of it. But in my personal opinion, it's not something that I believe you need in the beginning. I think this is one barrier that actually prevents people from getting started because the idea of having a plan is quite overwhelming to someone who already has a full time job. If you are really into planning and you feel like you want to do a whole business plan for your content creation and that's where you want to head with it, that's awesome. And if that works for you, that's great. But for a lot of people out there, I think those initial first steps are the most important. And sometimes the idea of creating a business plan or something of that scale is just too overwhelming and it's hard to know where to start. So sometimes for me in particular, I like to do things a little bit more spontaneously and just get started. Sometimes I don't want to have a plan behind what I'm doing because I'm still figuring things out as I go along and that's okay too. In saying that, I do believe it is important to set some goals and to set some goals in the sense that you know how you're tracking with your content creation, not only in terms of your growth and how your posts are performing, but in terms of how your content creation is actually going. Are you improving the look of your content? Are you always wanting to better yourself or better your content as well? Those are really important 
important questions to ask yourself. And really, I think that that's where some smart goals should be set. And they really have to be realistic and tracking in terms of how you're going along. You just want to see that progress because I feel like seeing progress and hitting some goals is always going to kind of spur you on to want to achieve more. The next point is to choose your platforms wisely. Now, by platforms, I'm talking about social media platforms. If you are wanting to do content creation for social media, make sure that you don't necessarily feel like you have to be across every single platform because initially you absolutely don't. Pick one if need be and really just stick to it. So for example, if you want to create content and specifically for Instagram, but you want to maybe also create content for TikTok, but just don't have the time, get started with Instagram first. And then as you go along, you'll find that you might have a little bit more time or a little bit more motivation to post to TikTok as well. I think it's really important more than anything just to get started in the beginning and to really start posting. Sometimes it just means sticking to one social media platform and not trying to be across them all. Because again, if you're doing too much and you're trying to be across it all, it's going to be really hard to stick to in the end, especially because you do have a full-time job, which is taking up the large majority of your time. Another point that I've got is to not just make time for creating content, but actually make time for improving your craft and doing research. These are really important things that most creative businesses actually have to integrate into their workflow. And there will be times where you really need to research what's happening on, for example, Instagram or TikTok. If you're doing content creation on YouTube as well, trends are really important to be looking at and to finding out what's popular at the moment, what you could kind of throw into your content creating schedule and really doing that research even on things like SEO and tagging and what is going to really help your content be at its best. Again, as well, like I mentioned, it's really important to always be improving your craft. So making time to do that as well and to practice, to experiment is really, really important. It's just as important as thinking about all the ways that you can make money for your new business and your side hustle. It's really just as important as that. You want to be having growth across the board in a lot of different categories. The next point is to give yourself a break every now and then, because I know how this feels to be in this position where you have a full-time job, you are burnt out, and you are just trying to pump that content out every single day or every few days. And sometimes you are tired. Some weekends, you're just exhausted from the week and you don't really want to do anything else. You don't want to create content. And it's really okay to give yourself a break on those days because you really don't want to become burnt out. It's the worst feeling. You don't want to see your content creation as a chore. You want to see it as something that's really complementing your lifestyle and something that you're working towards and something to feel good about. You don't want it to become that chore that just really gets in the way of you having time off as well. So make sure you know when to rest and really give yourself those breaks if need be. On to the next point. And it's really an important one because this is delving a little bit more into how do you start making money from content creation and really wanting to make that transition from a full-time job. So the really important thing to start doing if you want this to happen and you've kind of built up a little bit of a community or built up some content already, the really important thing to start doing is to pitch to brands. And this is something I feel like people don't talk about enough because uh, a lot of people out there actually just will wait for brands to come to them. And you can absolutely do that. And brands may approach you. But I do feel if you want to get your work and your content in front of brands as quickly as possible, as much as we like to think that brands know we exist, a lot of the time they just don't. So really try everything you can to get your work in front of these brands. Even if that means going on to LinkedIn, looking at potential contacts for any given brand and then guessing their email address. I have literally done this before to pitch to brands and that has been in my photography business as well. And it's actually a tactic that does work. There's lots of different ways and lots of different avenues you can get the contacts that you need for these brands. And even on Instagram, making a real effort to tag brands if you're, for example, wearing clothes of a certain brand in a post or if you're using certain brands, definitely tag them, have a look at what their hashtags are on Instagram and on social media and really utilize that to your benefit as well. Get their eyes on your work in as many ways as possible because unfortunately just waiting around doesn't always provide the goods when it comes to brand deals. And as a final point to that, it's really important that you monetize from the beginning if you can with your content creation. Now, again, if you're just doing content creation for your own self-enjoyment and your own fun, that's totally fine. You won't likely need to do this step. But for those of you who are looking at transitioning 
transitioning from a full-time job into content creation full-time eventually, you will need to make money. And one of these ways to really get started is to just do it earlier on, monetize things. So whether that is signing up for the YouTube partner program, if you are a part of YouTube and you've hit those targets, so you can earn from things like AdSense, or even if you've got a blog, that's a really good way to earn some money from the early stages. And then not only that, you can use things like affiliate links. So if you use certain products that you want to share with your audience or share with other people, definitely put affiliate links into description boxes or into your link trees or whatever you use, whatever platform you're using. There are many ways to integrate affiliate links. This is a really good way to earn a small commission if you're already using a product or a brand and you really love them and you want to share them with other people. The people who click on those links and potentially purchase something from the site, those people will actually end up transitioning to a commission that is paid to you. Usually it is quite small, but it's great to have all that monetization from the beginning. So if you do have a video or a post that does well, then you can eventually earn from that. Also creating digital products is another way to really help monetize from the beginning. So even making things like Photoshop presets or Lightroom presets is a really good way to earn money initially and from the beginning when you're starting your content creation journey. I hope that you've really learned something from some of these tips today and hopefully some of these tips will really help you along if you're doing content creation but you do have a full-time job and you're potentially looking at transitioning away from that in future. These tips are all from personal experience so I've definitely been there and I understand how hard it is to do all of this on the side while really trying to reach your goals as a content creator too. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already make sure that you do and give this video a like if you liked it. I'll be posting a lot more videos like this in future. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this topic and if you have a full-time job and are looking at getting into content creation let me know if you've got any questions in the comment section below I'd be happy to answer them. But again thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.